What's up, Gary? Hey, brother. How you doing, man? Looking forward to this. Good to see you, brother. Good to see you. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Good, man. All right, you know how get, we came get, together? Get in here. Peter Klein, right? Yeah. Fab, come in here. I want to give him some exposure. Let's get it closer. How you doing? I'm great, bro. Good, man. Great yes, Kate? To appreciate it. Tea would be amazing. What's up, Phil? Hey. What's, what's up, man? Tyler. Yeah, nice to meet you. How's everything? Where do you yeah. live? Huh? Where do you live? Man, I was in D.C. for 20 years and then... Because you were all politics? Yeah, and then we went, we moved to Florida a few years ago now commute. And you're in that Naples area or no, somewhere else? No, oh, okay. Part of Where? In the northern part, Panhandle. Panhandle. Yeah. Jackson? Is that Jackson? Uh, we're in a place called Seaside. Seaside. Yeah. And, That's cool. Uh, wife and little girl live a happy life. I'm on the road. Tell me everything that you're up to. Man, you know, we're doing, yeah, I just put out a book. And, I saw that. Yeah, and uh, I really I honor you in that book, too. Thank you, man. Because I think you're one of the few honest players that I continue to see. And I talked Thank to you. over 100 CEOs yeah. in interviewing this book. Yeah. And they're all frustrated with the digital marketing. <laughs> yeah. Right. And it's because they feel like agencies don't put their needs they don't. first. Well, agencies are publicly traded companies that put their needs first. Right, that's right. And, you know, the funny thing was, is like, the thing that I saw more than anything was like, they don't move quickly enough and they don't encourage their clients to be authentic. That's right. And that's the two things that I just see in politics all the time. Like, that's the way we have to operate. The end. Or we're dead. I, can I give you one example? Please. Yeah, so there was an election in Pennsylvania, a special election a couple weeks ago. This, I, uh, I saw it. 225,000 votes were cast, or yes. 228,000. This uh, was the Democrat who supported gun law and won, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. It was decided by less than 700 votes between God. the two candidates. That's incredible. 228,000 votes. Do this. Take out the two candidates' names, put company A, company B. Take out the voters, the 220,000 voters. And, and make them customers. customers. You're preaching, brother. And here's the deal. What if I gave... You love this. Ready? Yeah. Ready? <laughs> you, you have to understand, so, you, you're going to love this from your background. Yeah. If I was born in America, I would run for President of the United States. I know. And I would win. Yes, you would. I know it with every ounce of I, I, I absolutely I know agree. it with every fucking ounce Well, that's ounce why of I think you resonate with a lot of people in politics. A hundred percent. But think about this, all right. To, for the two companies, company A and company B, the two competitors in the marketplace. You're so you got right. five months until uh, the <laughs> event. You're going to know there's going to be a 228,000 customer transactions. It's going to come down to less than 700. And either your company A wins or company B wins. And the what company A wins, company B is out of business. Gone. How fast would you move? How quickly would you innovate? Because you're in Florida, how often do you have to go to DC? A lot. Yeah, I'm like one week a month, but I'm also. Oh, that's it. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah, we have an office in Texas, and so. It's just, great. Yeah. Good so, for you. what I really just see is that, and the other thing is like, politicians have to be authentic to their voters. Like, they have, like, if you think about the way we think from a marketing standpoint, I, I love the politician, but I care about the voter. Only. 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 Right. The reason I'm so me is I only care about the end consumer. The end. That's it. That's Whoever's closest to that right. wins. Right. The end. Right. So for 20 years, I've designed campaigns based on what the voters are looking for and what they want. The problem is most of these politicians make assumptions of what they want. They do. They, it's about assumptions. That's right. The ones People, that don't succeed. That's right. They, and they pander. And by the way, 20 years ago, because of the le media landscape, if I'm running for governor of New Jersey and I'm in a liberal town, my, my messaging may be slightly different than when I'm in a conservative town. You can't get away with that anymore. Right. Everybody's filming everything. That's right. I can't say one thing and then completely a different thing right. an hour later, but I would've. That's if right. I was a candidate 40 years ago, I would've. Now, not completely different, maybe it's different angles, nuances, so you can say authentic, but it's a very interesting time. We become more polarized because there's nowhere to hide. You know how to overcome that polarization? Uh, in general? Well, from what we found is uh, human contact. Like, sure, our digital programs, I'm screen I, agnostic. By the, way, so I I by the way, I agree with you. But the I, way that people are willing to be on a computer yeah. versus the way you ha you're gonna act with that person in front of them, That's right. totally different. So what we do is we design campaigns where we actually get people to talk to other people. And what we found was if you take like a voter or a customer that is not being touched and you personally touch them, and you know, personally communicate with them, that, that on the political side, it's like a 17% increase in voter turnout when you do that. Yeah. And if you got a million votes, now you're preaching. 17%, it's insane. Preaching. And so I'll give you an example. Yeah, you know Billy Reed, the um, uh, fashion guy, he, he 
clothing guy down in, uh, here in New York. Okay. My wife loves his clothes. Love it. Orders all these clothes <laughs> from him, right? And then she orders all these clothes from him like a month ago, and she gets a personal handwritten note yeah, it's from cute. their office. She will now buy the rest of her life. What you got? In the corner, orange book. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That book that I wrote in 2011. Yep. It will always play. Yep. It's scaling unscalability. You know why I would win the American vote? Tell me. Because I would spend every minute literally going to every single person until I couldn't. I know. All of them. I know. (laughs) Just all of them. Right. One by one. Yeah. And I would be like, look, you're, you know, like, here's, like, tell the truth and be good and, like, get to all of them, you will win. Totally. You will win. Right. It's super interesting to watch what's happening. I mean, the democratization of media. And, and just the polarization and the tabloid nature. Just such an interesting time in America politics for me. You sit down with 90% of the people in this country, we're probably this close and everything. This, but everybody but, want, like. But they, want, they, they can't talk about it. Propaganda, propag- the, the, I, I use the word propaganda because doing things to get people emotionally charged is where we're at right now and on both sides. Yeah. And you know, but to go back on like the voter versus the customer, like if the voter or the customer sees you trying to commodify. Can I ask you a huge question yeah. now that I've got you here? By the way, I love your vibe. Thanks. Uh, do you think 21 to 25 year olds have been galvanized enough to actually vote in November? I'm fascinated by this. I am fascinated by that. that I'm going there. I'm not going 27. I'm not saying millennial. Mm-hmm. Because the high school kids, Right. So I'm going 21. Oh, wait a minute. You know, like, like, you know, like, what do you think? They'll tell you something in polling, and historically they've always done something different. But we are in a very transformational time. Yeah. And so, do I think there will be an uptick? Sure, it could be like one to five percent. That could that's a lot. Massive of Based on what, you know. Right, but that's a total assumption because every time we're told the youth vote's coming out, it, it never comes out. out. But I do think that there's such polarization right now that you're gonna see. It. But this is the classic same old shit, right? There's, there's the people that come out are the people that lost the last time. Yeah, you know, and I talk about this in the book. There's like, a, always, it's an underdog mentality, and always. people on top rarely innovate. That's right. So they go to defense. Yeah, when, 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 when Bush won, he kept yep. running for election, so he he innovated like crazy, and then he won in 2004, and then the Republican Party completely fell off the cliff and Obama shot through the roof yep. because he was in the underdog and he 100%. came through and then he came in through his re-election and then Hillary's team went, ah, we, you know, we're just going to employ what Obama did. We'll just plug it in. It's all yep. good. And then the, the Trump team ended up coming in and innovating. And so yeah, that's And by the way, seeing. this has been going on much, This that's how Cl- Clinton won the same, like this is totally. Clinton, okay. Bush, Right? This is it's, Obama. It's what I keep talking about. Like, stop so thinking obvious. you don't have to innovate like you always do. Look at how the way you humble yourself. You have to humble yourself in order to say, I need to get better every day. I'm more scared oh. sitting in this fancy office than I was sitting in a, a, in a conference room in Columbus Circle of another company when I started it. That's Way right. more scared. Totally. That's why I'm gonna win it, the whole thing because I'm like, I'm not interested in that kid taking my lunch. Nope. I innovate more today, but that's because I'm willing to make less money. Yeah. Whoa. Oh, God, my wife's gonna kill me. Because <laughs> all I've done is reinvest. That's Every right. dollar I reinvest. How old are you? I'm 44. Wow, you look great. Thanks. You weren't guessing that either. No way. I was like, 20 <laughs> years. I was like, man, he must have been like 16. I was a bit like, you look great. Thanks. You're welcome. For, but look, every dollar I reinvest in my company, like, and you know. <laughs> what can I? What can I help you with? Uh, you know, I'd be grateful if you put the book or just give some pictures of the book. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that. We'll do that. Lot to me. Listen. Yeah, that's I'm your grateful. that's your current thing that you want to win at. Well, it's not that I'm trying to sell the book. You want to win? I, I want to tell the message. Who, brother, who are you talking to? to? I've written five New York Times bestselling books. Right. I, I make I'll make more leverage. money giving one fucking speech. Like like it's it's the game and the message. I, I get how it. How can I serve you? We just need to get to know each other. I'm excited that we did. Yeah. I think, you know, Peter loves his shit, so I think well, you know, my number one thing would be me, you, and Peter for dinner or breakfast in Florida okay. or New York or DC one day. That would be a blast. In a book he interviewed about how, I talked about how businesses can be used. You have it, right? Where yeah, is it? going Good. negative. So in politics, we go negative on our opponents because it works, right? That's right. And businesses could be using that same principle. You know that's my number one thesis, right? No. So my number one thesis, there's unlimited content out there and in every meeting, I tell number two all the time, like you do know that the best way for you to win this is to drag number one down to you. You have to punch up, can't punch down. 
But the fact is, and I lay out these examples, think about the, the Apple commercial, uh, the uh, Apple versus PC. You remember those? Of course. Right. I, I remember it like yesterday, Steve brother. Jobs uh, he's had so an smart. He entire strategy. He had 360 ads created. He never said PCs are bad. He had PC show out that they were bad. So no one was offended by it. And I get it. It was amazing. I get it. Yeah. Anyway, so Peter and walks walks through the Coke versus Pepsi wars, which is awesome. Yeah, really interesting stuff. Really awesome. Heavy users, right? Yeah. Not, not a lot of you know, new Coke failed literally because of just a small amount of people, just like winning an election. And they, all right, and they, you know, I always say there's these stages of like companies mm-hmm. don't know when they punch them out, they don't mm-hmm. know what to do, and they created new Coke out of the Pepsi challenge, yep. and it almost bankrupt the entire company, hundred year old company, got yep. bankrupt all yep. the negative ad strategy. Yep. It's brilliant. I always. Bro, I know nothing about my competition. Yeah, I don't either, actually. You know, I learned that from you. I used to give a shit, and then I went, well, I'm, I'm competing with me. I'm not It made sense to you, right? Because a lot of, it totally makes I sense. I could tell, because the way you're talking, it, it, you hurt, like. I don't care, I, don't, I hope they succeed, I spend, actually. Yeah, actually, I, I don't. It makes me better. I genuinely have no idea. Yeah. BBDO, 72 and Sunny, Droga 5, you know, like like deep focus, like 360i, like I just don't know. I know they're out there, I can right. name them. I hope they do great, just not better than me. But not like real life, not like, like if I meet them, if I met all those CEOs for a beer right now, I'd be like the best dude ever, like help their sister, like run her marathon, like would do anything. Now, when we all put on our jerseys, you wanna win. Right. Uh, by the way, I'm sure you, actually this is probably even more uh, similar to your world. It probably happens even more aggressively in your world Whoa. where there's another strategist on the other side who actually you're friendly with or respect. I'm not, but they will cut my fucking legs out. As they should. No, but no, no, everything we have is publicly available. Bro, so bro as they should. Yeah, Here, yeah as, I know, I'll tell you why. I love it. I'll tell you why. I don't know about the, the, the 10 NBA players that play on that stadium yeah, yeah. right there, in real life, they can be kind and generous, yeah, yeah, yeah. but when they get on that court, totally. like I'm Great. tripping you, I'm thrilled, like sorry you got, like I don't want you to get hurt, but I'm okay with it. Like, you know, like it's like, you know, I don't think we do a good job understanding in life with business and politics that it's just like sports. In sports, we kind of admire Kobe being a dick, choking, tri- like, you know, like we right. love the player that's like rugged and will look for the angle. Sure. We don't want dead cheating, but we even like, you know, we don't want steroids, but do we want the guy that stole the sign or like, like you know, like pull, like I admire the person that pulls the underwear or trash talks or pulls, like when I play basketball, I pull like, I like try to break the middle, little, I don't try to break it, but I like will grab like my friend's like left little pinky and like hurt it and then you're like pissed and like you're frustrated like, and then that gives me the competitive advantage. That's business. I know. That's like, that's, it's, you know, that's the way it is. Yeah, it's totally true. 